Hey, hey everybody, it's Scott Omato. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use MSI Afterburner to monitor your computer in Minecraft, guys. Uh, MSI Afterburner is free software. I'll leave a link in the description where you can download it, but it is the statistics display in the top left-hand corner. All right, so right now it's showing GPU, CPU, and FPS, all right, configured to do that. And so it'll continually update in real time to give me statistics, all right? And it's extremely configurable, guys. So when you download MSI Afterburner, uh, you'll also get the option to install the Reva Tuner Statistics Server, which is a separate piece of software. It's a system tree or a taskbar app. Uh, it has this blue computer icon. So you'll wanna bring it up to configure it because it is how you mainly uh, do your initial configurations, all right? And you can add Minecraft as a separate process that's being monitored. Let me show you how to do that, guys, now. Minecraft uh, PC Edition is javaw.exe, okay? So the easiest way to get that is to hold your control key and go down to the add button, and then when you click it, and there's tool tips that explains all this uh, that are helpful, but uh, when you hold control key and you click it, it'll bring up a window that shows you the 3D applications that are in use that it could potentially monitor. So you could select javaw.exe from the list and hit OK and it will add it to your server. Now, normally uh, there's just a global tab that would be just any of the 3D applications and settings for those. But in particular for the javaw.exe, you're definitely going to want to have show on screen display set to on. Uh, the application detection level can be low, that's fine. Stealth mode is an anti-cheat bypass system. Uh, some anti-cheat detectors are overzealous and they'll detect these overlays up here as a cheat. Uh, you could turn this on to avoid that. I haven't seen that in actual Minecraft servers, but it is a doesn't hurt to leave it on. Uh, custom direct 3D support is advisable. Uh, you can do some frame rate limiting and V-Sync in here if you want to limit the frames, uh, but more, mainly you're going to use this for testing. Okay, so on-screen display to sw support for this process you're going to want to have on. This is the global one of where it's on totally or not. All right, uh, an important setting is the on-screen display render mode. You're going to want to set that to raster 3D if you can, guys. That's going to give you the best quality and performance for it uh, and be the least intrusive. All right. Now, if you click this button, you can also go through and configure the fonts that are available uh, here in the Reva Statistics Tuner. But there's a lot of uh, customization settings you could do in MSI Afterburner for the display as well. Uh, but it'll control the font. All right. So we'll just leave that at the default font right now. Uh, for the on-screen display coordinate space, you want to set that to viewport and that will tie it to your game window. So if you resize your game window or whatever, it'll follow along with that. So that embeds it to follow along with the uh, game window. All right. On-screen display shadow uh, helps a little bit to give you some contrast against the background. All this stuff updates in real time. Uh, on-screen display uh, fill gives you a background if you want to see a background for it. Uh, you can see there's a black background here. Uh, depending on what you want to do to make it stand out more, you could do that. Uh, the on-screen display palette, when you click it, will show you the palette of colors that are being used at the bottom. And again, these are configurable within here or within the MSI Afterburner where they're actually labeled as to what they do. Um, Show own statistics we'll go over in a little bit, but an important one is the on-screen on display zoom, where with this slider you can choose the size. Let me grab it. Uh, you can choose the size of what the display is, and you can set it very small if you want, uh, or you can set it large, just depending on what you want to do. So you can set it extremely small, but for the purpose of this video, we'll set it at about the medium settings. And you can see that the preview here will update to let you know the uh, effect of your changes. All right, so there you go to scale them. All right, so now uh, let's go over to the MSI Afterburner because that's the main settings you'll use in the Reva Statistics Tuner uh, until you start recording stats with it, all right? So let's go to the gear icon here in the MSI Afterburner window, and it could be in a different place or different icon depending on your skin, but generally it's the gear icon. So select that, and then a properties window will pop open 
uh, where you're able to make various settings. All right, the one we're interested in for this purpose is the monitoring tab. So select the third tab, the monitoring tab, and you'll see that there is a, a list box here, and each one of these has tool tips on it that display. Now I'm going to turn off the tool tips for the purpose of this video because while they're useful when you're learning, they get in your way after a while. So you can go to the last tab, which is user interface, and you could choose show own or, or show uh, interface tool tips. Turn those off, hit apply, and then they won't be on the screen anymore. All right, so let's navigate back to our monitoring tab. So here in the monitoring tab, you can set the uh, polling frequency. Uh, by default, it's set to a thousand milliseconds, uh, which is one second. Uh, you could make that slower if you were wanting to do averages and stuff. That's a you know more spaced out average. Uh, you could set it to less if you wanted to for some reason. But the main area is this list here of all the things that you can monitor, and it is a quite an extensive list, guys. So you can monitor. Uh, the GPU usage, the GPU's temperatures uh, as a composite of all of your CPUs here. Uh, that, yeah, or, or as a composite of your temperature for your GPU, GPU usage. You can see memory, uh, fan speeds. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. The voltage. Uh, so temperatures for each one of your logical cores, logical processors. Uh, usage of each one of the logical processors and uh, just a bunch of stuff guys all right so what I'm showing now is I'm showing the composite CPU usage here all right and then I'm showing this GPU usage at the top all right and the order in the list that they're shown is the order that they show in the display now you can drag stuff up and down so if I wanted GPU to be higher then I could drag it higher in the list here uh, to go above the other one. Let's see how to do that. Yeah, yeah. so you can just you could change the order of things within this list to get more useful tools uh, toward the top, but also to change their order that they display. OK, now when you select an item like this, uh, like GPU usage, you'll see in the properties area that it says it's in the on screen display here. All right. And that's controlled by this checkbox right here. So if I wanted to remove it from the on-screen display, then I would click the button and hit apply and it would update in real time to remove that, all right? And I can also uh, change the labels on it. So if I select it and I go down here to override group name, it says GPU right now. If I wanted to set that to like the name of my card, for instance, uh, 3070, RTX 3070 and hit apply, then that would update to change that label to be that, all right? Uh, I'm gonna leave it at GPU for right now. It uses less screen space, uh, but you get the idea of how that works. So extremely useful to be able to do that. And of course you could do it with any of the items in the list here. Okay, and now as I said, CPU is a composite, but if I wanted to view uh, specific processors, uh, let's say I wanted to view the usage of uh, my first, I have 20 logical processors, but let's just say the first five or so. Then I could select them as a group with holding shift and then turn them on on the on-screen display. Once I hit apply, then it would update to show five of the processors and then the composite one, which I have configured as just CPU usage. So then you could monitor specific processors to see which ones, you know, see what their usage is, all right? So very cool, and you can, of course, go through and override the group name and stuff on those as well. All right, so we're gonna turn those off for now and uh, look at some of the settings for the frame rate. The frame rate uh, has a few more options to it uh, where you can select just the basic frame rate like we're showing here and put it on the on-screen display, but you can also view it as a graph. So if you select graph from the drop down here, hit apply, then it will show it as a graph, okay? Now, important thing to mention is that uh, by default, it's larger than this. It comes about out to there. So I can hit this three uh, dots icon here and it'll open up a customization window that will give you all kinds of options to set colors and all kinds of stuff, guys. You could tweak in this thing for hours. But at the bottom under graph is the width setting for the graph. Now, by default, it's thir negative 32, which is an offset from the screen, uh, which is this size right here. 
but I've changed that to negative 16. And of course you could customize that how you desire, but that seems to fit better within the columns and stuff like that. Again, within this window, you can tweak and tweak and tweak and change all kinds of stuff. It's reflective of kind of the palettes that you saw back there, all right? So um, an additional thing that you could do is under graph, you can also select text and graph, which will have both of those. So now I'm seeing the FPS text and I'm seeing the graph as well. Now for the graph, you want to be sure that your graph limits are within a reasonable state here. So I have it from zero to 4,000. I could probably do 2,000, but definitely be sure it's above the range of your uh, max FPS. So you can see that, all right? So that's basically it for the FPS for that. Now let's use the statistics server to get a uh, value of frame rate min, frame rate average, and frame rate max, all right? And so if I select those together and I choose show on on-screen display, again, it'll update here to let me know. It'll let me know, I'm gonna just change this back to text for right now, uh, so it's not in our way. But you notice nothing comes on the screen, all right? And that is because the server is not running and recording statistics, that's what this Revis statistics server does. It'll run and calculate and record statistics for you. But that's controlled by the benchmark tab here. And there's a key bind that says begin recording. I have it set to control alt left. You can set it to whatever you want. End recording control alt right. All right. Now be sure when you are in these key bind windows that you exit them before you go back to your game. Otherwise, you could accidentally change the key bind. So you can just go to another tab or what have you. But also the key binds won't be active while this properties window is open. It consumes the keystrokes, all right? So that's another thing to be aware of. But you would think these would display, but they won't until you actually enable them. Now look in the MSI window here, and it will tell you when this turns on. So it says begin FPS recording then these appear on the screen okay and so they're going through and now gathering statistics on the game uh, again the min uh the max and the average of what we're getting okay so it's showing you the this one's the average so min average and max is what we're seeing all right now another thing you can do is if you want to test your server and, and you can stop it as well all right if you want to test that your server's running and working correctly uh there's a setting for um uh, in your benchmark here or actually in the Riva tuner that you can say show own statistics all right so if i turn on the show own statistics button here all right let's get that show own statistics yeah and go back to here and it is overridden by this monitoring of the fps that we have configured right now so let's turn these guys off again select them by shift take them off the display hit apply then we'll see the statistics that are added by the server and they're basically the same values as what we had before again i can toggle the server reset it there i, I did that by starting and then i can end it uh, and it will re record the time that you're doing in your session again if you started or restart but it's giving you those same values current fps minimum average max but it's also showing you some uh, percentile uh, values as well, okay? So it's useful to troubleshoot the server to be that be sure that your keystrokes are working and stuff like that. And then you could go ahead and turn that off as well. Okay guys, so that covers the basics of it. Uh, just a quick mention on the uh, interface that you can have in MSI Afterburner. Uh, you can change skins on it. Uh, there's a Quite a few skins that are included with it and there's others that are available for download but i think this mystic skin here is pretty cool gives a nice uh more modern look to it really um and so you're able to go through and customize your skins customize your language the temperature format celsius fahrenheit time formats all that kind of stuff so overall guys extremely useful and powerful piece of software to gather statistics on Minecraft. And I hope this overview helped you to configure it for your version of Minecraft. If so, please leave a like, guys, and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. And let me know what you think. Have a great day. This is Scott Omato. Bye.